Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm gonna to try something a little bit different. Rather than doing a full project from beginning to end or process or something like that in a video, I'm gonna do something that I would normally do as a Reels video or a Shorts video. Um, I'm gonna to try to still turn this footage into that if it's easier for you to save this over on Instagram, but uh, rather than put the pressure on myself to do like a full project, I'm just gonna turn on the camera and pop in little pieces, I think. so. What I'm talking about, I am working through uh, the Heavenly Host devotional from By the Will for God, and this kit is sold out. It's no longer available, so I was a little bit hesitant about doing videos with it because I know that that frustrates people, but I still wanted to give some inspiration to those of you who did get this kit. So I'm going to be taking this devotional and turning it into a coil-bound devotional like I've done with some of the other ones. Um, recently. And so I'm piecing together some pages ahead of time for this book before I take it apart. And so I did share this page over on um, Instagram in my stories. Stay tuned. I will have a video on how I did this technique using the alcohol ink lift. Was it alcohol lift ink? Alcohol lift ink. Yes, alcohol lift ink. So stay tuned. I will be showing how I do um, this transparency page and then how you get a two for one. But um, for this video, I'm going to show you how I did this one. So I just did this really quickly here, um, just kind of playing around. It was going to do it a second time and thought that I would turn on the camera and show you guys. So I'm playing around with some alcohol inks with this particular kit. I just thought that the look would kind of go well together. I have a bunch of these that I don't use a ton. Uh, I did see a question in one of my recent videos. Can you use alcohol inks in your Bible? No, <laughs> do not use these in your Bible um, directly on the page. Uh, they it's it's basically the ink that's in a Sharpie marker in a bottle. So it will just, I mean, you will have ink that will go through like a hundred pages if you put this directly on the paper in your Bible. So don't do that. Uh, I use these on like other pieces and then insert them into my Bible or a project that I'm working on. So that's kind of what I'm playing with today. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos using alcohol inks with gel plates or jelly plates. And so that is the technique that I'm going to be doing today. I had never done this before this page and it was a lot of fun. So we're going to walk you through that. So what I have is a gel plate. There's a couple different brands out there, a couple different sizes. Um, I pulled out my larger one just to make sure it would cover um, an entire page for this booklet. I had pre-cut out some, um, I think this is just like very, very inexpensive mixed media paper like this that I've cut down uh, to fit in the devotional. So I think it's like four... And then some, <laughs> let me see, I will tell you, it is four and a quarter. And I think it's eight and a half tall is what these pages work out to. So I just pre-cut a bunch of these so that they're ready to go. I have one underneath this plate just because this glass mat I'm working on is black. And so it's very difficult to see the colors. So I just put a page underneath there and just to kind of you know, help me be able to see the colors, but also to help me line things up since I will be using one of these pages to uh, pull a print from. And so that just kind of helps me with that. So that's underneath there. I have this stencil from By the Will for God. I do think this one's probably sold out as well. If it's not, I will have it linked down below, but you can do this with any stencil. I just thought the wing would be kind of fun. So one thing I've done, I have worked I guess I lied. I have played a little bit of alcohol inks on my jelly plate, like, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I didn't love the results, but some of the recent videos I've watched showed how to use hand sanitizer as a base to help, um, you know, prolong the open time with alcohol inks. Alcohol inks are alcohol. They evaporate very quickly. So I just have some hand sanitizer. I'm sure many of you have this in your house. I actually don't use hand hand sanitizer. I know that might be ta taboo. I had to go buy some just to use in my office. So um, I'm just going to kind of walk you through the process here. So I'm going to put some hand sanitizer on my plate. And this gel just kind of keeps everything open a little longer. So I'm only kind of applying it around that area where the white paper is going to be. And then I will have some scrap paper off to the side here that I will be just running my roller along to pull off any excess uh, stuff. I am gonna lay down a base layer of color. So I'm gonna do that with some mushroom. Now you don't really see 
this color too much in the final print because I do do um, another technique at the end there, but we're just gonna use this to kind of lay down a little bit of a base and it is very warm and dry where I'm at. So my hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer I might say hanitizer because that's what my kids call it. <laughs> it's evaporating very quickly, but it's just enough to kind of get that color spread around. And then it's also gonna help this stencil stay stuck to my plate. So I'm gonna lay my stencil down, kind of just, you know, in a general um, location over that page. And then I'm just tapping it down to make sure that it is sealed to the plate. And then I do kind of go lightly over it with my brayer just to seal it. And I am picking up a little bit of color from the last time and that's okay. I didn't fully clean my brayer. So there is a very thin layer of mushroom down. Like I said, you really won't see a whole lot of that. And then I'm just going to go and take some other colors and just drop those into all of the little spaces of this stencil. So obviously you could do this with any stencil really. Now it isn't going to give you a clean, crisp, perfect look. As you'll see on this one, there is a little bit of like feathering, but I want that. I want it to be kind of messy. I'm not even really squeezing the bottle. I'm just kind of touching it to, I'm squeezing a little bit there, but for the most part, you can just touch it to the plate and it pulls the color out of the bottle. So I'm just going to go through and just drop these in no particular order. That last color was current. This is moss. Um, I can put, you know, two colors in one space and they'll kind of mix together, which is okay. I kind of want a little bit of color mixing. So let me go ahead. I'll put you on fast forward and we will drop all these colors in and I'll try to put the colors up here um, on the screen or I'll put them down in the description box down below for you guys. Kind of looks like a hot mess, but that's okay. We are going to let this sit and dry for a few minutes. Uh, I have seen up to 30 minutes. I, like I said, I live where it's very, very, very dry. I've got a lot of fans going, so it won't take me very long at all. I have also in the past used, or in the past, when I did this one, <laughs> I used my heat tool just a little bit from a distance. I don't want to ruin my gel plate, but just to kind of finish out the drying process. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we are... I can see that the ink is most of the way dry. I can tell that there is still some sanitizer, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, <laughs> but I'm gonna pull this off. Now, because the hand sanitizer is still a little wet, there will be a little bit of like mush out around the stencil, but that's okay. Um, I want that splotchiness. Now, I didn't get quite as much with this one as I did with this one, but that's okay, we'll see what happens. So now I'm gonna hit this and let it dry just a little bit more. Okay, and don't worry about your stencil. Your stencil is not ruined. Even though alcohol inks are permanent, I just use a little bit more um, alcohol on like a paper towel or a baby wipe, wipe this off and all of that color will come right off. Or you can leave it on there, you know, to do other additional prints and let that um, color transfer if you want. Now I've cleared off my colors. I'm just gonna have, um, piece of paper here to collect my excess paint and to um, roll off my roller. So now this should be most of the way dry. I'm going to kind of just touch it in some places to make sure that there's no pools of ink. There is not. So now I'm going to take some uh, white acrylic paint. Now what color you use will determine kind of the effect. So if you want this aged effect, uh, I will show you how to do that with distress spray stains, but you can kind of rush to that step a little bit sooner if you use like a beige you know colored paint or an off-white colored paint i don't have that i just have white acrylic paint right here so that is what i am going to use and we're going to use this to lift this print off of our mat here so i'm just going to put a little bit of paint out onto just a piece of copy paper get some on my brayer and then i'm going to brayer this over my design. I want to go pretty quick because it is going to activate that ink just a little bit and it doesn't need to be a lot of paint. It needs to be pretty thin um, is all it needs to be to pull this print. <clears throat> 
So like I said, I have some pieces of mixed media paper already pre-cut to the size that I want. And then I'm going to lay this down and we're gonna pull this print. So then I'm gonna take another piece of scrap paper here. That way I can get it nice and pressed in there. You can even take your brayer, brayer over this just to make sure you're getting a nice clean transfer. So this is just our scrap paper. And then we can pull this and see what we have here. This is always the fun part is to see what your print is. Now, you're gonna notice very, very different from the one that I did previously. One, I have the wings flipped different directions, but this is very, very like bright and vibrant. Nothing wrong with that. I can use this one also, but I took a ghost print or a second print uh, to get that lighter color that I did um, in this one here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some more white acrylic paint. You can see there is still some color on here. Let me make sure that's lined back up. I'm just going to put a little bit more acrylic paint onto our plate. Nice, even, thin coat. Don't worry about any of the markings. You won't see that really too much, and it'll just add to kind of the distressed look. So we are going to pull second print. All right, this one should be our ghost print here. There we go. So that is actually the look I wanted. I wanted it much more muted, but you can see there's still quite a bit of color on here. You're getting a less of the mushroom background color. So you'll see the backgrounds are different between these two. But now we can do the same, same next step for both of these and we'll have two Pages. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this. I'll use a baby wipe to just clean this off. Maybe a little bit more hand sanitizer will pull off any residual alcohol ink that is on here. You might be able to pull even another print, but probably not. There isn't a whole lot of color on here. So we're just going to move all of this stuff off and we'll go into the next step. Okay. So since we are working on mixed media paper, we can get this a little wet. I don't want to treat this like watercolor paper, so I'm not going to soak it. Um, but I am going to take some Distress Spray Stain and Antique Linen. You could do whatever you want for this stage. Um, the alcohol inks are permanent, just like Sharpies. So this ink isn't going to move or go anywhere. Um, and it's actually going to kind of act a little bit like a resist, kind of. Um, remember, there is some acrylic paint on here. And acrylic paint, you know, does resist spray stains a little bit. Um, it just It just gives you, like, instant grunge look. It's just not going to take it evenly and that's what I want. So I am going to spray these down with just a little bit of water just so the ink will move and then I'm just going to go to town kind of spraying these, um, dipping them, adding more water, just getting that ink moving and covering these pieces to give them that aged look. And again, because there is a little bit of acrylic paint on here, it isn't just going to like soak into the paper like you may experience with spray stains. So get that moving. And then we'll just go ahead and dry these and see what our finished look is. All right. So they're all nice and dry. I love the look of the antique linen with the alcohol inks and the uh, acrylic paint. It just picks up all of these very strange colors in it and it just looks super amazing. So um, you can leave them as is just like this if you want that kind of soft ethereal kind of painterly look, but I want a little bit more structure brought back into the stencil. So I did go ahead and just do kind of a preliminary cleaning on my stencil. I think I'm gonna do this one first, but we're gonna position the stencil back over our design. And even though it is loose, um, and kind of messy, I still can see 
where things are supposed to be. So I'm just gonna take a micron pen. Now this step you could do with anything. You could use color pencils, you could use your ink tense pencils and then maybe spray some water and let things even bleed and bring more color in there if you wanted. You could use um, colored gel pens. I thought about even using a gold gel pen for this step. Um, different weighted micron pens will give you different looks. I'm using a, a 02 micron pen today, um, but I'm just gonna go in and just outline every little piece of the stencil. So obviously if you're gonna do this step, you wanna be mindful of the stencil that you use. You know, if it's too intricate, this might just, you know, drive you nuts and burn you out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trace all of these openings with the pen and then I'll come back and show you how it looks all finished. All right, so here are all three. These two are the most similar. This is a second generation using a micron pen to outline. This is a first generation, and then I just used a flare, paper mate flare pen to outline it. So it's a little bit different. I don't know that I love that look. I think I like this much, much better, but I thought that I would give it a try. Now I can add all kinds of things to this. I'd probably add maybe some splatters to it. Uh, just be mindful, whatever you do to it after this point, be mindful of whatever pen you outlined with. So if you, you know, are going to be doing some more wet medium, some stamping, some, you know, spray stains, things like that, you do want to use a waterproof pen like Micron. Um, I don't, I think the flare pens do um, bleed when they get wet. So just, just keep that in mind. Now for finishing the back. So as you can see, this is mixed media paper. So, you know, it doesn't completely bleed through, but there's definitely some mess on the back. Um, you could spray stain the rest of this so that it kind of matches the front if you want to. I will most likely use one of my um, dyed papers or a pattern paper to just back this. So it will be a little bit thicker, but now these are all ready to go into my little notebook once I get all of my pages finished and I can assemble it. So there is a look at that technique with the alcohol inks on the uh, gel plate with a stencil. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used or mentioned um, in this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, if it was inspiring, maybe you're gonna be trying a new medium, that's exciting. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.